stupid Jesus, when did I hit over 1k subs? Rest of the internet got cancelled or what? Also, a lot of you flooded here after I did a small collab with Daft Pina, so big thanks to him for giving me a shout out. He's got a channel with a really solid content, but he can tell you that himself. Hey, I'm Daft Pina, and I make videos about animation and animation people. Haha, <laughs> how fun. A natural comedic talent, eh? If you guys want to support my coffee addiction and help me keep making videos, consider subscribing to my Patreon. For an equivalent of a cuppa a month, you get access to rough sketches, sneak peeks, early announcements, bloopers, and early video releases. Whew! In short, send help. So, checking news in 2020, am I right? <laughs> Come back 2019! All is forgiven! Sweet baby Jesus. You probably heard about the chilling disappearance of Naya Rivera, actress best known for her role as Santana Lopez in the madly popular TV show Glee. She's like Sharpay in High School Musical, minus the screechy voice and dressing like a bedazzled Christmas tree on Broadway. Good lord, I'm blind. On July 8th, 2020, the 33-year-old Glee star, Naya Rivera, took her four-year-old son Josie to Lake Piru, in Ventura County, California. They arrived around 1pm and soon rented a boat in order to go out on the lake together. About three hours after they left the docks, nearing 4pm, another boater spotted their pontoon drifting in the area called the Narrows, on the north side of the lake, with little Josie asleep on board. His mother, however, was nowhere to be found. While Josie had his life vest on at the time he was found, an adult's life vest and Rivera's identification were also discovered aboard. According to the Sheriff's Department spokesperson, it was difficult to get information from the boy. No shit! Like, how old is this child? Four? Four and traumatized after losing his mother in the middle of a lake? Mother? Ah, shit. Right, I need a solid plan here. Time to engage aerial surveillance. <clears throat> the authorities determined that Rivera and his son went swimming, but the actress didn't make it back to the boat when Josie did. The search party was dispatched almost immediately. And they went all in like madmen to find this lady. I'm talking 80 plus people coming the area on land, in the air, underwater, full on Tommy Lee Jones fugitive surge mode. On July 9th, the day after Rivera's disappearance, Ventura County Sheriff's Office announced that the search and rescue operation had moved to search and recovery mission. Naya Rivera was presumed dead. Here's where the case starts turning super creepy. The authorities also released the footage from the search wanting to show the public that they are not giving up. Little did they know, it would explode with a mind-blowing discovery by one Twitter user. After watching the helicopter footage, one user spotted what seems to look like a human figure leaning on a rock by the edge of the lake, wearing strikingly similar clothing to what Naya was seen wearing in the CCTV footage from the docks. After this shitstorm, the police better be squeezing the truth out of that rock. Unfortunately, on Monday, July 13th, the county sheriff's office informed they have recovered a body floating in the northeast area of the lake, and later confirmed it's the missing actress. All hope for her safe return was gone. The case, however, couldn't slide without conspiracy theories. <sighs> I am likely gonna regret this. One of the early theories that people came up with was stirred by the cryptic tweet from the actress, posted on July 8th, the day she disappeared. It was a picture of her and her son, with a caption that read, quote, just the two of us, end quote. One Twitter user googled the caption as a song title and made a chilling discovery. In the song titled, Just the Two of Us, by Eminem, there are several parts that seriously raise people's suspicions. The song is about a man who brings his young son to the lake, where he drowns his wife. Okay, normally I'd say the same thing as everyone. When you don't know who did it, it's probably the husband slash ex-husband or boyfriend. 
And I am legit the first one to be jumping into conclusions like a goddamn ballerina. Not this time though, cause there's some hard evidence to debunk this particular theory. The autopsy report confirmed that Naya's cause of death was nothing more than a very tragic accidental drowning. According to the police, there was nothing pointing at foul play, nor any indication of a suicide. So reverse sudden death caused another widely spread and horrifying theory to resurface. The theory of the Glee curse. Naya isn't the only member of the Glee cast to have passed prematurely, or in very disturbing circumstances. On July 13th, 2013, Corey Monteith, who played Finn Hudson in the Glee series, was found dead at a hotel in Vancouver, Canada. The coroner's report announced the cause of death being an accidental drug overdose involving a toxic mixture of heroin and alcohol. Up to that point, the fans were unaware of Monteith's drug addiction, hence his sudden death was a shock to all of his fans and friends. But there's a plot twist. Naya Rivera's body was recovered from the lake on the same exact day that Cory Monteith was found dead in that hotel, July 13th, seven years apart to the dot. Another plot twist? In season 3, episode 10 of Glee, titled Yes Slash No, Cody's character, Finn, discovers that his dad died of a drug overdose, up until that point believing his soldier father had died as a war hero. Finn's mom tells her son she fears the same thing could happen to him. Mark Selling, who played Noah Puck Puckerman, was found dead by an apparent suicide on January 30th, 2018 in a riverbed in the remote area of Sunland, California, a few miles from his home. Media speculate the motive for his suicide was connected to the federal prison sentence Saling was facing for receiving and possessing child pornography. Los Angeles police served a search warrant on his home, which turned up more than 50,000 illicit images on his computer and a thumb drive. Now for the eerie part. Brace yourself, cause this is gonna be the dumbest shit you can think of. In the second season of the show, episode 15, a substitute teacher, Holly Holiday, played by Gwyneth Patro, discovered that two of her students, Puck and Lauren, are planning to make a sex tape to make Lauren famous. Jesus Christo. Which would technically make them both guilty of creating and owning, you guessed it, child pornography. To add to the chilling omens, in the third season of the show, the characters talk about where they think they're gonna be by 2030, and Selling's character makes a disturbingly familiar remark. Quote, In jail, or dead, or both. Right, the school thinks it's a great idea to ask you little demons where you think you're gonna be in like 20 years. I don't expect you to come up with anything that remotely makes sense, so don't expect any wise advice back. I mean, I became a teacher for crying out loud. Clearly, not a good example of smart life choices. I want to be the president. Jesus, at this rate, we're gonna have to run Hunger Games for this job. I want to be a mermaid doctor. What are you, high on seltzer or something? I'm probably gonna be in jail or dead or uh, both. You. Damn. That's disturbingly not impossible. Naya Rivera's death was pronounced a tragic accident. But could it be linked to something beyond our understanding? Something darker? Or perhaps the truth lies in Naya's cryptic last message, with chillingly accurate hints hidden in the lyrics of a song. We might never know. I promised a Q&A segment, so I'ma answer the questions you posted on Twitter and Patreon now. Who inspired you to make true crime content? It's hard not to make true crime content in 2020. No, but seriously. It started with me watching a lot of True Crime Daily, um, then transitioned to true crime channels like BuzzFeed Unsolved and a few podcasts like Crime Junkie, Wine and Crime, you name it. How did you start? If it's about drawing, then I started back in middle school with cringy anime OCs. Then fast forward to my 20s and I'm still drawing weird cartoons. What am I doing with my life? Are you, in fact, a criminal mastermind? The first rule of Fight Club is... 
You do not talk about Fight Club. But yes. Just wanted to quickly say big thanks to PranksterLog who recorded some voiceover for this video. Also, I got my first ever fan art. Just, oh my god, just look at these. I'm getting emotional. And as always, thanks for sitting through the case and lame jokes with me. Stay safe, lock your doors, until the next time.